There are so many haunted places located around the world, but a lot of them are located in the United States. And some of the most haunted places can be found in Indiana, and if you're brave enough to visit these places, you may come in contact with paranormal activity, ghosts, or even demons. These are the top 5 haunted places in Indiana you should never visit. In at number 5 we have Whispers Estate. The Whispers Estate was built around 1894, and between 1899 and 1901 is when Dr. George and Sarah White moved in. George was a successful physician and ran his practice from their home. The two adopted many orphaned children, and unfortunately several passed away in the house over the years. Some of the children they took in were troubled. Many of them passed away in the bedrooms and other areas of the home, and even some of Dr. White's patients have been said to have also passed while in the home. Dr. White practiced in the home for over 25 years, so it's probable but unknown how many over the years had passed in the home. In the early 2000s, the home underwent renovations and a lot of bizarre activity began. Many claimed that lights would flicker on and off, footsteps would be heard stomping around on the second floor, and as time went on, the activity escalated. To this day, people reserve time to come and experience all this paranormal activity, and are encouraged to write down any experiences they had while in the home. And these accounts are posted to the Whispers Estates official Facebook page. You can go through the page and find creepy photos people have taken that show demonic figures, ghosts like creatures in even orbs. It's also pretty common for the guests to be scratched up by unseen fingernails or touched by an unseen hand. The estate earned the Whispers moniker after the numerous guests that experienced somebody whispering in their ear, somebody they couldn't see. Due to the amount of people who have passed at the home in its early days, it's like there are a number of different spirits that haunt the estate to this day. The Whispers estate is known as the fourth most haunted house in the United States, but many who have visited believe it to be the most haunted house in the entire country. In at number 4 we have Rhodes Hotel. The Rhodes Hotel was established in 1893 and was named after the first owners, Clara and Newton Rhodes. The youngest child in the Rhodes family, Everett, passed in one of the second story bedrooms after contracting tuberculosis at 18 years old. Soon after their daughter's death, Newton unfortunately died and it's believed he had died inside of the house. After Newton's passing, Clara turned the house into a dual brothel and speakeasy. It's said that one of the ladies of the night, Sarah, still haunts her bedroom room tucked behind the stairs on the second floor. After Clara's death, the family home was opened as a hotel in the late 1800s and was meant to house those flocking to East Central Indiana during the natural gas boom. It's even believed that John Dillinger and Al Capone stopped at the hotel for a stay after hitching a ride on a train to Indiana. Not only did the family pass in their home, but a preacher by the name of Lester Poor supposedly hanged himself in the attic during the time when the home was converted to a hotel. But many believe his death could have been a murder. Due to the hotel's rich history, many locals and visitors have experienced paranormal activity, and everyone in the town knew that many spirits that passed in the building still haunt it to this day. The hotel closed its doors in 1937, and the property remained in the Rhodes family hands, but sat empty for more than 30 years. The hotel and its contents were eventually auctioned off, and it landed on the National Register of Historic Places, and the hotel saw three owners before the Haley's took it over for restoration. The Rhodes Hotel was purchased by Clint and Linda Haley in 1995, and they heard rumors about the haunting of the hotel, but this didn't faze them. They were more worried about the work they'd have to do to restore the home. The Haley's claim that they didn't encounter any paranormal activity, but many find that hard to believe. The hotel was up for sale again in 2017 when a man by the name of Couch took it over for his charity. Couch had launched the Lost Limbs Foundation four years earlier, which raised funds for prosthetic limbs for children. To this day, Couch's charity has owned and run the hotel, not only had it been named among Indiana's most haunted places, but the hotel is consistently booked for private and paranormal investigations. The overnight investigation tickets can get up to $200, and this hotel attracts people from across the country. There have been many investigators that believe there is an extensive activity in this old hotel, and people have captured a figure like Shadow moving across the living room curtains with the use of night vision cameras. Most commonly, people hear whispers in the second floor creaking when no one is inside. Unlike the Haley's, Couch said he's seen and heard supernatural happenings in the hotel since moving onto the property in 2017. He has heard footsteps on the staircase. The property camera has turned off randomly and picked up voices before the footage flickers back on. Once while hosting an investigation, Couch said he witnessed one of many Victorian dolls left behind from a previous owner jump off of its chair. In at number 3 we have Avon Bridge. The Avon Bridge is known to be haunted by almost every local living in the area. It is a massive trip art railroad trestle spinning a rural road over White Lick Creek. The bridge 
Bridge is a fascinating landmark in Hendricks County with lots of legends and history surrounding it, some more sinister than others. There are a few historical facts about the bridge that we do know. It was built in 1906 off County Road 625, it was designed by W.M. Dunn and is still used today. Many haunted stories surround this bridge and the area surrounding it. One story claims that a mother had been walking on the tracks and fell to her death. The mother's wailing could be heard when you drive under the bridge. It's common for many locals to honk when driving under the bridge in an effort to muffle her screams. Another story is that a drunk rail worker slipped during construction and was buried alive in the wet cement. The tale is that when a train goes over the bridge, people claim to still hear his moaning. Many locals say that if you go near the bridge at night, you will hear moaning and can see a ghostly figure of a ghost or even two or three at a time. If you're traveling near the bridge on a hot summer day, you may be witness to the ghost tears streaming down the concrete. Many people don't even refer to it as the Avon Bridge. It's often called the Haunted Avon Bridge because of the number of accounts of ghost sightings and constant sounds of the moans and screams heard from the ghosts that haunt the bridge. In at number two, we have James Allison Mansion. The James Allison Mansion was built for James Allison and it was a dream home, done in a grand design and style that exhibited James's wealth and importance. James was an important figure in the auto and plane industry, greatly helping in the development of cars and airplanes. He founded the Presto Light Company, which produced the first efficient headlight for early automobiles and was a founding partner in Carl Fisher's Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He also started Allison Engineering Company, which evolved and transformed into an aircraft engine make, known today as the Allison Division of Rolls Royce. James purchased the 65 acre estate, and he and his wife Sarah built this glorious mansion, starting construction in 1911 and finishing in 1913. The massive home had an elevator, a billiard room, an indoor pool in the basement, a breakfast room, a library, a grand kitchen, and even pumped in ice water. 15 years after the Allisons built their forever home, James then fell in love with his secretary, and he divorced his wife Sarah in 1928. Only a month later, James married this former employee, Lucille Musset. However, James contracted a fatal case of pneumonia and died shortly after marrying his second wife at the age of 56. In 1936, the estate went up for sale, and that same year it was bought by Sisters of St. Francis of Oldenburg. The former Allison home became a home for the college's library, administrative offices, classrooms, and sleeping quarters for the sisters. There have been many things seen and heard throughout the years since it became a college. There was a girl who had drowned in the pool in the basement, and James's untimely death in the home, both people could be haunting this mansion to this day. It's said that people who pass through a sudden accident or a bout of illness, sometimes their spirits hang around, perhaps unaware that they have died or not wanting to accept their deaths. And this is the case for both the little girl and James. The entity of a little girl is often seen throughout the mansion. There are strange cries that are heard from the basement. In the attic, and objects seem to move by themselves and can completely disappear. There is another entity seen and could possibly be more than one, and they like to take keys and objects and move them to odd places. The library in particular is often completely rearranged like the books and furniture. And finally in at number one we have French Lick Springs Hotel. Nestled in the small resort town of French Lick sits the massive French Lick Springs Hotel. This legendary hotel was constructed in 1845 and is a crown jewel of the southern Indiana town, but there's more to this resort than meets the eye. This Indiana hotel is known to be one of the most haunted places in the state. Thomas Taggart was a mayor at the time and purchased the hotel in 1888. After purchasing the hotel, he added luxurious furnishings, marble floors, and built two championship golf courses. During this time, Taggart became the Democratic National Chairman, and the hotel became the unofficial headquarters of the Democratic National Party. In 1931, Franklin Roosevelt visited the hotel because of its Democratic standing and won the presidency a mere year later. Over the years, the hotel and the work Taggart put into it made it one of the most prominent hotels in the area and even ran the West Baden Springs Hotel out of the business. Unfortunately, in 1916, Taggart passed away, but according to local legend, his spirit has never left the building. Taggart died in 1916, but that hasn't stopped rumors of sightings of this famous hotel owner. Guests and employees frequently encounter strange and paranormal activity throughout the hotel, and they believe it is caused by Taggart himself. Many spot his ghostly figure near the service elevator and can pick up a strong scent of pipe tobacco. Others claim that they witnessed his spirit riding down the hallway on a horse and making noise inside the ballroom. Some hear noises and others encounter his ghost, though usually both don't occur at the same time. Not only is Taggart's ghost living in the hotel, but there are also rumors of a former bellhop that lingers around the hotel. Many believe that he was a current employee until they saw old photos of him hanging on the wall a 
or were told no bellhops were on duty when people had encountered him. Employees and guests say that it's pretty hard not to encounter some sort of activity when you're in the hotel, and due to the vast amount of paranormal sightings are why it's considered by many to be the most haunted place in Indiana and one of the most haunted places in all of the United States. Well, there we have it. I will see you in the next video.